Okay, hey, so we're going to do a Gaelic tune, um, and it's um, one of our key passages will be the Great Commission, which talks about baptism. And so if you want to sing along, baptized in water. And baptized in water, sealed by the Spirit, cleansed by the blood of Christ our King. Heirs of salvation, trusting His promise, faithfully now God's praise we see. A baptized in water, sealed by the Spirit, dead in the tomb with Christ the King, one with His rising, freed and forgiven, thankfully now. in water, sealed by the Spirit, marked with the sign of Christ our King. Born of the Spirit, we are God's children, joyfully now. Good evening. Good evening. How many got outside on this beautiful day? Yeah, a few of you? All right. Chris and I had a big hot date. Guess where? The Home and Garden Show. Uh, yes, we'd never done that before. Somebody gave us free tickets. He was going to be there. And so we went up and down the aisle. We, I think we got our steps in, so that was a bonus. Um, but boy, that weather was crazy. It was just really sloppy. Um, hey, we had six of us representing St. Olaf Lutheran Church last night at the concert, the concert, what I call. Um, it's Casting Crowns, and it was a great concert, so pretty cool. Um, please stand, greet one another, say hi, say your name, say peace be with you, whatever works for you. Get around some. You guys are so quiet. Wow, it's just quiet. Yeah, yeah, it remains standing. That's a good sign. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start with a, a, a tune from my relatives. It's a Swedish folk tune, Children of the Heavenly Father. Children of the Heavenly Father, safely in His bosom gather, nestling bird, no star in heaven, such a refuge e'er was given. God, He's down, doth good and nourish, in His holy court they flourish, from all evil things he spares them, in his mighty arms he bears them. Neither life nor death shall ever from the Lord his children sever. Unto them his grace he showeth, and their sorrows all he knows. Though he giveth or he taketh, God his children ne'er forsaketh. His a loving purpose solely to preserve them pure and holy. All right, one of my favorite hymns of all time, How Great Thou Art. We're going to do this with a little different beat. 
when we were practicing and uh, I got a little carried away uh, um, at the end. I said, did we do that right? They said, no, but you did it your way and that's fine with us. Okay, so we'll see how this works. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works I had had made, I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. And sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. But Son not sparing, send him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gently bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come, with shout of acclamation, and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art, how great thou art, and then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Oh yes, you are a great God, you are an awesome God, you are a powerful God, and you are an intimate God because you created each and every one of us for a purpose. You called us to be your children here on earth, and we are to re represent you. We are like, like salt. We are like light in the darkness. We are a city on a hill, and your Holy Spirit shines in and through us. As your baptized children, we are part of a community called the Communion of Saints here and now on this earth the community of saints in heaven, and the community of saints still yet to come. And so, Lord, help us to grasp this idea that you have the church, your people who represent you in body, mind, and spirit, are one community. And may we grow as brothers and sisters in Christ. And yet, Lord, we have conflict. We have issues. We have things going on in our world that are out of our control, and it throws us off. And sometimes we don't love you, and sometimes we don't love others. And so, Lord, we come to you now humbly, with a heart of humility, asking for your mercy as we confess our sins to you in the silence of our hearts.
Yes, Lord. Despite the things we've said, despite the things we've done, and despite the things we left unsaid or left undone, you still love us. And you showed us that love, ultimately with your arms stretched out on the cross to forgive us our sins and make us right with you and make us right in living out our faith for you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Of course, we got to sing ancient words, so you can do that while you're seated too. of life, words of hope, give us strength, help us cope, in this world where'er we roam, ancient words will guide us home, ancient words ever true, changing me and changing we have come with open hearts, oh let the ancient words impart. Okay, it's going to sound a little weird. Who has done their saliva test or whatever test for Ancestry.com? Okay, some of you guys just bashfully going, yeah, I kind of did that, yeah. Did you discover anything interesting about your ethnicity or roots? Anybody? Interesting. Yeah, Dave, what? I actually found out I actually grew up in Norwegian. Me too, yeah. Hey, that's a qualification to be in this church, so that's a good thing we found that out. So, um, <laughs> so I, I, I was prepared for that, too. Like, did you think, but did you, any of you find out you thought you were mostly Norwegian, and then you found out, like, you were a greater percentage of Swede? Like a total upgrade, I'm trying to say. Okay? <laughs> All right. Because I'm just a little more Swedish. But I do have solid Norwegian blood, just in case. Now, how many of you are putting together your family tree? All right. We've got a couple. Okay. I mean, this is, this is big. If you're usually post-60... Um, you need projects, right? <laughs> Some of you are going, yeah, I got plenty of projects. I still got my wife's honeydew list or husband's, yeah. Um, well, my, my in-laws um, are currently doing this for both sides of their family, and they get so excited, you know, so they show us when we get there, and, and it is fascinating. Some of these folks um, have passed away so very long ago, and as you reflect on um, the images and stories that are passed on, you wonder where each person was regarding their faith. Because some of these folks, my in-laws, remember growing up, but they might not recall. Where, where were they as far as church and God and all that goes? Did they know and love Jesus? Was there a funeral? Was, was their funeral a big celebration, essentially a send-off to heaven? Um, or, or did it feel something a little different than that? I've got several... Uh, friends and family members who run marathons and some do triathlons too. Actually, I have a nephew who runs 50 mile races. Just bonsai, right? Now, I think they're crazy, but also amazing that they can do that, right? Um, some of these races end up in a stadium with a crowd of people cheering them on as they arrive to the finish line. And I can only imagine how exhilarating it must be, one, for the runner finally to complete the race. Um, and I, I personally, if I had done that, I would say it'd be a total relief, personally, right? 
And for the family, though, some of them are jumping up and down in the amazing moment of their loved one, especially if it's their first one and they actually accomplish the feat, right? Okay, with that backdrop, let's listen to a reading from Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Oh, the great cloud, and I would like to say crowd, of witnesses. Yes, we are all talking about the greats. And if you look at Hebrews, you will hear about the greats like Abraham and Noah, King David, Isaiah. I would include Hannah and Mother Mary, the apostles. And then, you know, as we talk about saints, we often think of particular ones like Mother Teresa. And there might be other nuns that come to mind. For me, St. Francis, and the list goes on. And these are all just people, but they were faithful to God in some in extraordinary ways, yet still sinners just like you and me. So when you do Google images and you put in communion of saints, you get a bunch of these pictures, right? You get these icons of what you appear to be holy people. Yes, they're to be celebrated, but perhaps not to be so elevated and adored like Jesus. This great cloud of witnesses refers to the saints who have gone before us, meaning those who have passed away, and those who live in the re heavenly realms. Now, I'm not really all sure if they all have halos or not. Does anybody know? Okay. Now, when I land there, I wonder if I will be one of those chubby cherubim or seraphim flying around singing and playing a harp or guitar. I'm not sure. That has yet to be determined, I suppose. What I like about this image, though, is it seems to be a little more like ordinariness of people, although it looks like a bunch of pastors in it too, right? You know, they got the alb and the, it's like, oh, come on. So I really preferred this next image because everybody blends in all together with no one standing out. We're all just ordinary followers of Jesus because we are all on some, we're really on the same plane level, okay? The same playing field. All of us are sinners, and all of us are saints. Who is a saint? Baptized followers of Jesus. Now, Martin Luther used a Latin term, simul justus et peccator. We are both sinner and saint at the same time. What Luther was saying is that in our justification, we are one and the same. We are righteous or just because of what Christ has done for us, and still remain sinners. All because of what Christ has done for us, we have been made saints. Not by what we've done, right? But what Christ has done on the cross for us, to save us of our sins, to set us free. So what I like is there's really no Hall of Fame saints here in that big image. Then what is this word communion all about? The phrase is first found in the 5th century. So imagine, they were forming creeds early on in the 200s and the 300s. And, and creeds were simply, this is what they believe. And they were trying to define their faith and go, what are the key tenets of the faith? And they would form creeds. The Apostles' Creed, some had thought, like, oh, each of the Apostles wrote a line in the Creed. No, that, that is not the case. It was attributed to the Apostles, but it's basically saying when the early church started and formed, then these were the key things about the faith they wanted to teach from generation to generation. So when you were baptized, you were taught these things, and that was part of your catechism, okay? So back in the 5th century, um, the Apostles' Creed was noted as one by Nicetus of Remesiana. I might have slaughtered that last word, but that's how I'm going to pronounce it. 
The original Greek phrase has been translated as a sharing of the benefits of membership in the church, that is the communion of saints, and as the communion with the saints. So really just think of it, it's church community. We're all connected to one another, not just those who are alive, but also those who have passed and those who are to come and be a part of the church, okay? But it's all who are baptized. That's a distinguishing feature. So church is a communion or community of believers who have been baptized. And so baptism matters. Jesus commanded it, and Lutherans see it as one of only two sacraments. What's the other sacrament? Holy communion, right? These are the two things commanded by Jesus. Go do this. So, does anybody remember in the Bible where Jesus commands us to baptize? Yeah, so do you remember whereabouts that was? Matthew, Mark, Luke, John? Yeah, good, good, good answer. Matthew, good answer. Matthew 28. It's a really key passage. It's really good to kind of remember some key passages. So Matthew 28 starts with 16, and it goes to 20. And it says, now the 11 disciples went to Galilee. Why is there 11? Yeah, yep. So they went to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw Jesus, they worshiped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, and what? Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So indeed, that is our ultimate mission, is to go make disciples of Jesus, okay? Every single one of us. It's not just the pastor's job. So it really makes us think, particularly, who do we have the greatest influence with? A good answer would be family. Not always the case, right? It's hard to persuade Paul. But, you know, it, it is your family. It's often your children. Um, and, and then it could be grandchildren, okay? So it is, one, and I see this in, in many grandparents where they, they, they try to encourage their children to bring their grandchildren to be baptized, which is a great step. And then it's also to teach them, right? Because Jesus didn't say, hey, you know, do the water thing with the word, and it's all done. No, there's more to it. It's to teach them and help them grow in the faith. Well, there's a great song that we do. Steve wasn't prepared for this, and you don't need to be. We're just going to do it a cappella. But it's by Han Hansen. It says, Go Make Disciples. And it goes something like this. You can join along if you pick up on the melody. Go make disciples, baptizing them, teaching them. Go make disciples, for I am with you till the end of time. Go, be the salt of the earth. Go, be the light for the world. Go, be a city on a hill so all can see that you're serving me. Go, make disciples, baptizing them, teaching them. Go, make disciples, for I am with you till the end of time. Go, make disciples, something like that. Way to go. All right, so baptism is not as simple, as I said, as a little water and some proclamation. It's about being part of the church. So when we say that together, they're making promises, the parents and we as a whole congregation are making promises that we're going to do life together. That's what the communion of saints does. It's something bigger than us as an individual. As much as we like to be individuals in, the American, in this American system, it is about community. And sure, we can go around baptizing folks, and I could do, all, I could do that all day long, but there's so much more. It's about teaching people to walk in the manner of Jesus. It's teaching people to love God and love one another. And that's difficult. Maybe not so much the teaching, but the actual living this out. 
And it's best practiced in community with the communion of saints on earth and in the world by bringing in flavor like salt, light in the darkness, and a witness on top of the hill for all to see. So yes, the communion of saints or church is all of those who have passed away with faith in Jesus, those of us who are here on earth testifying to Jesus in our lives and discipling them in the faith, and the generations that follow. Yes, even those not even born yet. I think of my children's children, even though they're not even married yet, but I think of that down the road because I'm around all these grandparents and stuff and I get excited. But any grandparent out there, any grandparents, raise your hand if you're a grandparent. Holy cow, that's, that's a lot. Um, so be proud. And it behooves us to accompany our grandchildren in the faith if we're given the opportunity. One of our grandparents brought two, if I understand things right, two of her grandchildren to a special Holy Week Sunday School rotation last week. And they'd never been to church before. And they were hearing about Jesus for the first time, perhaps. Imagine that. Imagine. Here's what the communion of saints means. It refers to the whole community of faithful followers of Christ, living and dead, past, present, and future. I'm going to conclude with these final words from Reverend Katie Shockley. She writes, When we gather and worship, we praise God with believers that we cannot see, heaven and also throughout the world. When we celebrate Holy Communion, we feast with the past, present, and future disciples of Christ. We experience the communion of the saints, the community of believers, living and dead. A little side note. So last night, I was at the Casting Crowns concert, and there's a particular song that just reminds us of people who passed away in our lives. And um, they had talked about their drummer in the band had passed away over the last two-year period from COVID. And so they were grieving his particular loss. And who came to mind for me immediately was my mom. Um, God bless her. She was, she was the most faithful follower of Jesus in my life. And I just broke down in tears. I was just so broken. i just grateful, grateful for her. I miss her. And it, it just reminded me how, you know, as she is in heaven and she's celebrating life there, um, I'm still tied to that community or communion of saints. And so this faith community stretches beyond space and time. We commune with other Christians throughout the world. And there'll be a song we'll be singing during communion that will kind of connect us with that. And believers who came before us and believers who will come after us, which is a powerful image. So I believe that the, com that the church is the communion of saints. And as a believer, you belong to the communion of saints. So as the communion of saints living on this earth, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Let us pray. We believe in you, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And our eyes are fixed on you, for you created us. You gave us faith. And through your Holy Spirit's work in our lives, you make us more like Jesus, to be your witnesses, like salt, like light, like a city on a hill. May we be the ones to extend your grace to a world so desperate for hope and love. You are the host of this supper. May we be the ones who welcome and say, come to the table. In Jesus' name, amen. So there's this song by a group called Sidewalk Prophets, which I love the title. And their words are, are just so meaningful. Um, I, I didn't give uh, Clara the heads up, so she worked on it all week, and I, I apologize for her working so hard on that song, and then I throw in a video. But there's something about the images, and I really get moved by the images. But anyways, some of the lines are like this, um, where Jesus is walking the earth, and he welcomes a motley crew of misfits, liars, and thieves. And yet still said to everyone, come to the table. All are welcome, no matter what you've done. Join the sinners who have been redeemed. Take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. That is the communion of saints.
That is all of us. That's everyone in the world. And we are the ones who are hosting the table with Jesus. And we're the ones that can say, come to the table. So let's watch this together. Isn't that cool? How many of you have seen The Chosen, seen parts of it? I mean, it, it really comes to life if you've seen it because then you know each of these people and you know the storyline and you know how significant it was when they encountered Jesus and they welcomed him no matter what their past, no matter what their sin. So again, you can go online, you can see clips, you can do all sorts of stuff, but it's called The Chosen and I dare you to do it if you haven't done it yet. It's, it's fantastic. It's, it's a game changer. All right, we will continue with the offering. Creator. 
creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me, creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast, where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. We all know the Apostles' Creed. This is another way of saying it by a song. And it captures it well and the intensity of it too. In this time of desperation, when all we know is doubt and fear, there is only one foundation. We believe. broken generation when all is dark you help us see there is only one salvation we believe we believe we believe in God the Father we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And He's coming back again. We believe. faith be more than anthems, greater than the songs we sing, and in our weakness and temptations, we believe. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Do a new thing in the church. Give us leaders who come up with fresh ideas to share the gospel with the world and imagine ways of furthering your ministry. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing for creation. 
reverse the trajectory of climate change and environmental catastrophe, revive habitats already impaired by human disregard, lead us all in ways to preserve our world through recycling, conservation of resources, and wise use of our lands. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Do a new thing in our world. Break barriers that prevent political enemies from working together for the well-being of all. Make a way for the peace and collaboration among the nations. Guide us in electing leaders who work for justice. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. Do a new thing for those who suffer. Reveal a path for any who are unemployed or underemployed, for those experiencing homelessness, and for all who struggle with money. Be with everyone who has suffered loss of loved ones, injuries, and loss of property from the tornadoes and severe weather in the South and wildfires in Tennessee, Oklahoma, and Texas. We pray for the people of Ukraine and for the people in the Middle East, for those serving in the military around the globe and those who have returned home. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Do a new thing within us. Direct us into encounters that broaden our understanding of the human experience. Amplify voices that are ignored or devalued. Deliver us from the scourge of racism. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. Do a new thing in our death. Fill us with the knowledge of Christ and the power of his resurrection as we give thanks for all the saints who have attained the prize of their heavenly call. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus welcomed everyone to the table. You watch The Chosen, Series 1, you, you see at the very beginning that Jesus is out camping and he's connecting with children, children of all things, playing, playing outside, and, you know, Jesus is camping out. And, you know, again, children were disregarded in, in the community. They weren't considered as precious as they are today. And then, uh, and then Jesus would go and he'd go to fishermen, and they were often considered less than others, especially these because no other uh, rabbi had picked them up. And then he called a few. And then he'd go from place to place, and even Mary Magdalene, who was in all sorts of trouble, and connected and, and gracefully connected with her, and, and she came to follow from one person to the next. And then eventually he would have a table um, and over Passover, and they would celebrate the Seder meal like we just did on Tuesday with uh, some of our, our children and adults. And he broke bread, and at the table would be one who would actually betray him, though he followed him for three years. And as he broke the bread, he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Following supper, he took a cup, he gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, and shed for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join in the prayer he taught his followers to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table. All are welcome.
Lord of all. One cup of blessing which we bless, and we, though many, throughout the earth, we are. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. So if you know Elaine, Elaine Manis, she's just on top of all sorts of things. And she zips into my office, hello, hello, anybody here? And uh, says, we need volunteers for Family Promise. So we host the week of the 10th, April 10th through the 16th. And what that means by hosting now is making meals, right? And then we delivered them, and now they've got their own place, okay? And so we get to accompany people who are in major transition in life. So if you are able, there's a sign-up sheet on the beautiful um, wooden table with chairs there that uh, the stretches donated to the church, and uh, so please sign up there. Um, Good Friday breakfast. Um, Steve is going to be the special musician um, really? And I'm going to accompany him, and uh, a friend of mine's going to preach, and we got some others, but it comes with breakfast, okay? And this is at the Shorehaven Pub, seriously, yeah, and um, it's at 7.30 on Good Friday morning, all right? Whatever that date is, like the 10th, all right? So be there. Um, finally, if, um, if you're not getting a weekly email, I've got a sign-up sheet over there that says weekly email, and uh, we're going to make sure that you're in the loop so you get um, what's going on, and you know you can always delete them if you get too much, but, uh, but yeah, it's good to communicate. Dave, you look anxious. Uh, blood drive, April 12th, Tuesday. Anybody else want to stand and give an announcement? Going once, going twice. Hit it, Sam, that's your cue, that's your cue. And that's your sign. And Paul gets a point for being the first one up. And all the people said amen. Ready? Amen. You are not alone If you are lonely When you feel afraid You're not the only We are all the same In need of mercy to be forgiven and be free. 
It's all you got to lean on, but thank God it's all you need. And all the people said amen. Oh, 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 oh. and all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. If you're rich or poor, well, it don't matter. Weak or strong, you know love is what we're after. We're all broken, but we're all in this together. God knows we stumble and fall. And he so loved the world, he sent his son to save us all. And all the people said amen. Oh, oh, oh. and all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord for people said amen and all the people said amen oh, 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 oh and all the people said amen give thanks to the lord for his love never ends and all the people said amen blessed are the poor in spirit heart. blessed are the persecuted and the pure in heart blessed are the people hungry for another start for theirs is the kingdom the kingdom of god and all the people said amen oh, 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 oh. and all the people said amen give thanks to the lord for his love never ends and all the people said amen Peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.